Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. Today we're gonna to be actually harvesting and then wiping out these peas. I'm actually gonna take them out of the ground. They are getting a little overgrown, a little big, and I need to get some tomatoes in this bed, and these are just taking up all the room. They're kinda of encroaching on the tomatoes that I have in here right now, so I've got some tomatoes right here, and they're starting to kinda, of, you know, tangle up with the tomatoes, that's not good. Also, it is now pretty late into the season for these, and you can see we've got a little bit of disease here, which I don't wanna have spread to my other plants. I don't think a whole lot of diseases from peas are gonna spread to tomatoes, but it's possible. And so I don't necessarily, I don't wanna take that chance. So I'm gonna wipe these out. We are gonna harvest what I've got on the vine right now, which is quite a few. And this morning I already harvested maybe about this amount. Uh, like a whole bowl full. So there's not gonna be a lot, but I did leave some. We're gonna try to get them all out. I've, since I've planted these, I've, I've gotten about a full gallon size plastic bag completely filled with these. I'm harvesting them daily and they're producing more and more. So let's go ahead and pick all of them, get them off. Um, we'll get one last final harvest from them and, and then we'll take them out. Uh, I'm gonna feed most of this green to the chickens. They'll eat it. So it's real good for them. It's got a lot of protein, actually. Let's get to it. All right, so I harvested quite a few from this side already, but I'm always missing some, guys. So we're just gonna go through, pick off what we see. And a lot of these you can see are falling down. We had a major storm last night come through and it's still real windy, um, but it, it knocked all these over and I need to get some support to my tomatoes. And so, it's just time to get these all harvested and done. I'm gonna pick all of them, even the small ones, because you can eat those. I usually let them get a little bigger, but I mean, even real small ones, they're edible. Since we're wiping out this anyway. Boy, it's real tough to harvest when this moving like this. Super windy this morning. Every time I go to reach for one, the wind blows and I can't, can't grab it. There we go. Ooh. Ow. Dang it. Oh, that hurt. Getting old, guys. I guess my balance is off or something. I don't know what happened there. Went to reach for one, and then the wind blew it away, and I reached a little further. All right, well, there we go. I think I got them all. I'm sure I missed a couple because it's really hard to find them when they're all moving around like this. Uh, <laughs> it's just tough. Like I said, this morning I harvested probably doubled this amount and I, this is just what I didn't find this morning so I and mean, there's always ones that I miss so I told you I missed some there's one every time I look there's there's another that is missed oh, there's one right in front of my face I missed it so like I said there's plenty more in there that I keep missing oh there's a nice good one I missed that one which is hard some of the leaves look identical to these but it's kind of fun to pick because it's almost like a Where's Waldo kind of thing. You're, you're trying to find it. If that's your thing, if you like those kind of games or puzzles, then harvesting peas is gonna be fun for you. All right, let's start cutting these down. And these are actually edible for people too. You can eat the, the greens and they're good in salads and stuff, but I just, I don't really have a use for them myself. And the chickens will really love them. It'll really give them some good nutrients. Well guys, found a couple more and I guarantee you there's a bunch in here <laughs> that I didn't get, like right there. I mean, I keep looking around, I'm gonna find them. So let's gather all this up, bring this over to the chickens. All right, guys. There we go. <laughs> These poor chickens are getting blown around all over the place. Good nutrients for them. So 
simple enough we're just ripping all right so this is going to give me an opportunity to clean all this up too we've got quite a few weeds in here that sprouted up it's hard to see when all those are in there so we'll pull this up this grass see how these cabbages are doing it's weird that these didn't get hit with the cabbage loopers too bad really at all i need to harvest those soon too so we'll trellis these up today we'll toss all that once you get these in the ground it's real hard to get them out but if you just work at it there's a couple ways you can get a car jack and they'll kind of pull it up i'm not going to show that today because i'm not going to do it but if you just wiggle them enough back and forth they'll work the ray out of the ground there we go got it up and i want this sticking this way because i use these little notches to tie this stuff up we'll start driving this and we want to get this underneath and that'll hold it really well bring you guys back once these are both driven in cut off all of these right here same with the other side here's the jute fiber let's go ahead and trellis these up really simple i've shown you guys this a few times how to do this but we want to look down and see how high we want these so the first one here is going to be pretty low since that one hasn't grown up too big so we're we're talking two up so I wrap around it three times, come back on this side. I just do a half hitch, guys, a couple half hitches. No need for fancy knots. It works. And do a third just to make sure. Unwind a little bit, toss it over to the other side. Bring this over. And we're up one, two, three, about the same. And we will wrap this all the way around three times. I'm gonna make sure that's really tight. And this is something you can do one person. I mean, it's much easier with two, but if you wrap it three times, it's gonna hold its tension pretty well. You can see we've got tension there okay and i don't have any i've got slack so you can throw this over and now we're going to give ourselves quite a bit of room here cut and we'll wrap two or three times and then i i cross over all of it like so and that brings these together Okay, and it makes this a little stronger. And I wrap around and do another half hitch, another half hitch, and one more. And now we're in nice and tight. And that's wrapped around each one. You can see this is coming up through. If you need to, you can always adjust it, make sure that it is going up through like so you can crisscross in between each one of these, which actually technically I could do right now. So if you forget to, you can come through like this and you cross it, bring this one up through. And what that does is it creates a center point like so, and then it holds it a little better. And then same thing with that one. Now I'm gonna add one more since that one's so much larger. This one is not gonna be hitting it yet, but that one will and i want to make sure that that one's well supported these are real inexpensive you can get like five of them i think they're like 20 bucks 30 bucks somewhere around there and then the jute fiber it's like three bucks at tractor supply that's where i get my jute fiber but you can get it anywhere you just set two of the t-posts in you do have to get a driver otherwise i mean you don't want to use a hammer that's going to be really difficult so the t-post driver is really helpful those are expensive they're like 40 bucks once you got one once you got one you're good now that all this is out it's been sitting for a day or two i was running the drip irrigation system because this needed it um, actually all these beds needed it but i just turned it off because i'm gonna till this area so we'll pull up the drip 
so we can get in here. And that's, that's the only area we're gonna till, is right here for now. I've gotta come through and harvest this because I wanna get another type of tomato right here. And I might be harvesting these here too, the bunching onions. Let's get to breaking this up. I love this thing, this thing's so, it makes it so easy to break all the soil up, till down in there. All right, let's break up the soil. Even better with our hands, even it out. All right, now I've got this all evened out. Here are the plants. And this one here, is also a sun gold and that one's a sun gold so i've got two sun golds here and i'm going to put this one over here now i've got these t-posts i'm probably going to have to pull these t-posts out of the ground and scoot them over a little because i think i'm going to plant like right there and that opens this up here uh easier for me to water and get in but also i can line some like bunching onions or something that that will help keep pests away and this is plenty of room maybe even right there there's plenty of room between those tomatoes and this so i might scoot this trellis over and this is a sweetie so not the super sweet 100 which i had seeds of but they didn't take i planted some seeds of those and i didn't get them so but this is the sweetie the sweetie is uh similar uh they're they're a good tomato i grew them last year i liked them they're pretty good so we'll plant that right there like all tomatoes i'm going to bury them super deep as deep as i can get them i've also got some marigolds so these are the giant yellow marigold any marigold can work but they're really good to plant with tomatoes so i'll place that there for now and we'll stick one right in in between the tomatoes here all right let's start with the hole so we're gonna dig a as deep a hole as we possibly can all right so i need a shovel i have this little shovel that will work better but my daughter likes using it and and she places it random places in the yard where i cannot find so we'll use the big one here once you get pretty deep here this soil got kind of hard so i had to hard for the hand at least all right good now we got that pretty deep you can see all those roots in there from past plants those will break down over time i'm going to put some fertilizer i got a this is a 624 fertilizer this is what i use for everything guys so i'm going to put a little bit maybe a quarter handful put a large amount of this bone meal like probably a half a handful and then just a touch of this blood meal in the beginning to kind of, I mean, really not much, just a little bit. There we go. We've got decent root development here. All right, so we're placing that down at the bottom of the hole. We're going to backfill. And you can see we're burying much deeper than it was originally. We're going to get it up to as close to that first leaf as possible. And that's gonna give it really good root system. And there we go, that one's in the ground. Next, we're gonna get this sun gold hole dug. So luckily this is not root bound yet. You can see it's starting to be though. This did sit for a little too long. I should have gotten it in the ground a, a while back, but I did not, too many things on my plate so anyway we've got it down in the ground oh you know what we forgot we can do it now so a little bit of this blood meal and then of course the bone meal and just a pinch of this organic fertilizer spread around now we can backfill 
And again, we're going up to that first leaf. I trimmed off a lot of the leaves on the bottom. You want to do that like a day or two before you plant. Just going to minimize the risk of this plant getting disease. But if you are going to bury it deep, which I highly recommend, you want to trim those leaves off a couple days before. And then overall health of this plant will be much more. All right, you can see how deep we got this almost up to this first leaf. And within a couple days, we're gonna trim those leaves off once it gets a little taller, which I've gotta do with these ones here because they're touching the ground. So anything touching the dirt could potentially, any of the leaves touching the dirt could potentially turn into a disease. Most of the diseases you get with tomatoes are soil borne. Now let's work on the marigolds. Now these, we don't need a lot of fertilizer. We'll put a little bit and we're not gonna bury them super deep. Here's one tomato, there's another. We'll stick it right in the center, right on the side here. Decent root development there. And you don't want to bury any deeper than it was in that pot. So I'm going to bring this up just slightly, fill in underneath it. There we go. We'll even all this out. There's a marigold. Let's get another one on that side. Now, if you guys notice, I'm pushing down, okay? I am compressing the soil a little bit because I don't want any air pockets. And I did the same thing here with the tomatoes. And that's, that's really important when transplanting initially because you need to get good soil contact. There we go, we got those in the ground. Now we need to water, which we will just replace the drip irrigation to do that. All right, so now the drip irrigation is set back up. You can turn it back on. We'll get that start dripping. And while I'm here, I'll show you what I mean about getting the leaves from the ground off. So we're just gonna clip off the leaves or any shoots or suckers that are low to the ground that could potentially get diseased. There we go. You want some really sharp scissors that'll help prevent disease. We've got a sucker right there. I'm gonna pull off because I don't want a sucker that close to the ground. I am gonna allow a couple of these suckers to, to grow. Might keep this one. If you see, this one is splitting off into a second but I might not, I'm not really sure on that yet. So I'm gonna leave it for now. We will pinch off this sucker and this one back here. Actually, I gotta cut that one. There we go. So now we clean this up along the ground here. There's no leaves touching the ground, less chance of soil sp splashing up if we overhead water. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one over here. All right, so I got this all trimmed up. You can see we're gonna cut, cut that bottom leaf off there because it was touching the ground. You can see it curled up and started getting diseased. So we're gonna get rid of that. And of course, we wanna throw all this away, by the way. So we wanna put it in our trash can and get it off our property. Looks to be a healthy plant. It's doing well. All right, so this bed is pretty much almost ready, guys. You can see how much growth right there on this uh, tomato. But I pulled the weeds along here. There's a lot all the way along. It's looking much better. I put a whole bunch of hardwood, hardwood bark mulch, which is this right here. I actually have two different kinds. You can see the, the difference. This is darker, that one's lighter. But I didn't put it over here because it's kind of difficult to get it up under the, the lettuce. And I also have a couple small little tomato plants that had sprouted. I don't want to cover those. So I'm going to wait till some of this grows up a little bit more. And then of course, when I harvest this lettuce, probably in about a week or two, then I can get another row of tomatoes right here, which are almost ready. And I'll show you that in a minute. And then I can remulch all this once these get a little taller. I left two onions. I did harvest the rest of the onions. I'm going to maybe leave those. I might leave those uh, for a while. 
because they kind of help deter pests. In the front row here, I'll get a whole bunch of flowers and maybe a couple leeks or something. I'll plant maybe chives, leeks, something like that to really ensure that, you know, I keep the pests out. I did put some basil. I've got two basil plants, two marigolds and two calendulas. I think that's how you pronounce it. Now the calendulas get really big and they're gonna come out this way. I can get a couple small flowers right there, something that doesn't need a lot of light because these will block all the light of those since they're not on the end. Oh, I also moved this over for the support here. And so this bed, the tomato bed is almost ready. I'll bring you guys back in a couple weeks once I completely finish this and I'll show you kind of the end result of what this bed is gonna look like. And hopefully we get all these growing up a little bigger. Check back in a couple weeks here to see the progression of this. Well, thanks for watching everyone. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.